Well, today is Soldier and Group Sunday. We do this twice a year to put some emphasis on actually the seedbed of church. Uh, yes, it's the seedbed of our church, but we're going to spend a few minutes in just a moment going over a brief message on that. We'll be going over some groups, highlighting some groups. But before we do, let's pray. <clears throat> Our Father, we thank you for drawing us to Jesus. We believe you're here to reveal your heart to us and your heart for us. And by the way, Father, our hearts are yours. We thank you for giving us ears that hear and understand and eyes that see and perceive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, last week we distributed our Soldier in Life directory and um, she's going to put up the uh, front cover that we have this year. But where we want to put some emphasis is in the back of the book, the back cover. I don't know how many years, not a good habit to have, but I would read books and look at them from the last chapters of the book to see if I wanted to buy them. Now, this is long before ebooks, and they don't let me do that anymore. <clears throat> My reputation got out. So, but on the back of our book, we believe that it really is, uh, when we say the seedbed, the roots of Sojourn Church came from the truth and came from the Word. So, the back of the cover says this. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, gathering together, encouraging one another. Let me ask uh, those of you who have been encouraged by a small group, would you raise your hands, please? It's a nice number. Room for growth. Um, if I were to put a title on this brief message, it would be Jesus, the relational kingdom. He is a kingdom unto himself. So, got some verses here. Uh, want to quicken you to notice that the first thing Jesus does after announcing that his kingdom is here, and he says, my kingdom is at hand, the kingdom of God is at hand, he then says, repent and believe in the kingdom. The first thing he does is actively and intentionally seek out people. He's on the hunt for people. Let's read uh, from Mark chapter 1, and these will be verses 14 to 20. I'm going to uh, scan these verses, but I encourage you to look at them, especially in terms of sequence. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. When you hear that phrase, at hand, that's saying it's within your reach. It's within your grasp. Repent and believe in the gospel. Then Jesus goes on. In verse 16, he says, Passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. 
and immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, Jesus saw James and John, his brother, in their boat, and immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat and followed Jesus. That's interesting. They left their father's business to hook up with God the Father's business. Now, let me submit this to you. You do not have to leave the company that you work in. You don't have to leave the business that you're working in. You carry within you all of the dynamics and equipment of Father's business. And you get to engage in that right where you are, right where you live, right where you work. Remember, when he says the kingdom of God is at hand, a big aspect of that is relationships are at hand. Can you see that? Jesus gathered people together to build relationship, to form a small group right after his proclamation of his kingdom. It's the first thing he does. Remember, in Jesus' life and in his service, the majority of his exploits for God were done with him and his small group. Whether it was three or 12, uh, look at Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. He had a number of small groups didn't he? So this is very, very important for us not to lose this because there's something that God is saying to us about his kingdom. Even on the day of his resurrection, Jesus was drawn to two or more people who happened to be on the road to Emmaus. In Luke 24, 13, that very day, the day of Jesus' resurrection, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village named Emmaus, and they were talking with each other about these things that had happened, the crucifixion of their master, Jesus. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. So the three of them just walked on to Emmaus. Actually, it wasn't until later that the clue truck hit him as to who was this third person. They were actually having a meal. They encouraged Jesus to stay and eat a meal with them when they got to Emmaus. And when Jesus broke the bread... They got it. That's when they recognized that that man was Jesus himself who was crucified a couple days before, walking with them, eating with them. In fact, here's what it says in Luke 24, 32. These two said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures. Don't kid yourself. That happens today. We've got the Holy Spirit, the author of scripture, who can open to us the word of God. That's pretty awesome, isn't it? So it's a dynamic picture of these two men walking down this road. You think of Matthew 18:20 where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Now, Jesus had already said that earlier in Matthew. Here we are at the end of Luke, and he's living it. Have you ever been part of a group, part of a conversation where you're engaged in the moment, engaged in what you're hearing and saying, and it wasn't until later that you realized you heard something 
that really stirred your heart. You could even say, did not my heart burn within me? Could it be the reason you were being quickened, inspired, or encouraged was because of the Holy Spirit of God, the same one who was in Jesus, the same one who was pulling life from you to give to someone else, and the same Holy Spirit who was depositing life in you from someone else. Has that ever happened to you? Especially when you engage with what we call kingdom people. And things, we say things that we didn't even know we were carrying. And I'm talking about good things. And then we hear things coming from people that blew our mind that they would even have such knowledge or wisdom or insight. That's Jesus. That's the Spirit. Jesus said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I among them. Why don't you consider breakfast with Jesus? Here again, we're going to read and see where he's gathering his people together, getting them encouraged. In John 21, I'm going to scan through verses 1 through 19. Jesus revealed himself to seven of the disciples by the sea. Peter and John were among them, and five others went fishing. They went out in the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus was standing on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know it was Jesus. He said to them, Do you have any fish? And the disciples answered him and said, No. He said, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now there were so many fish, they were not able to haul it in. John says to Peter, it's the Lord. When Peter heard that it was the Lord, Peter threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish. When they got out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid on it and bread. Jesus said, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. Come and have breakfast. Jesus came and took the bread, gave it to them with the fish. This is after his resurrection. Do you think there's any way that those seven men were heartened and fortified by being in the presence of their Lord? Eating breakfast with Jesus. By the way, I want to encourage you, breakfast of champions has been redefined. The breakfast of champions is anything you eat or drink with Jesus. When they had finished their breakfast, Jesus and Peter have a conversation where Jesus stirs Peter to love and good works by encouraging him to feed and tend his sheep. Do you think those were inspirational words that Peter heard? This is going on after his resurrection. As big as, big as a priority as it was when Jesus was alive on the earth, the idea of gathering, the idea of stirring men and women to love, the idea of encouraging, as big an idea as that was while he was alive on the earth, it is no less a priority for him now that he has been raised from the dead. Why don't we look at that cover, the back cover, one more time. And let us consider how to stir up one another to good, stir up one another to love and good works, gathering together, encouraging one another. Can you ever have too much encouragement? Do you think courage 
is something we need in this day and time. Love for one another in Christ is evident in works of love and the gathering together in Jesus' name. Even as a 12-year-old boy, Jesus was sitting in a gathering of teachers on the steps of a temple. He tells his parents, I must be about my father's business. <clears throat> what is the father's business? You think it's people? You think God's in the people business? I do. In fact, in all humility, I know it is. Jesus knew that people are God's inheritance. In Ephesians 1.18, we pray that you, the saints, may know what are the riches of God's glorious inheritance in the saints, in you. You ever wonder what's in it for God? Go look in the mirror. Look to your left and right. It's his people. They're his treasure. In his life, death, and resurrection, Jesus was always encouraging people, giving life to the group of people within his reach, within his grasp. Hold on. Even on the cross. There's a small group of three men that are being crucified. Even in the midst of that, Jesus was loving and encouraging to one of the criminals, extending eternal life to him in the last minutes of his human life. May we never doubt the intentionality of Jesus, the Son of God. If a 12-year-old boy is going to say, did you not know I must be about my father's business? You can bet that a 33-year-old man is going to carry that out. He set his face like flint for relationships, knowing the whole dynamic of small groups. So, if you'd like a glimpse on, of heaven on earth now, begin and keep on relating to God's people, God's inheritance. God's loving nature is expressed through encouragement. Now, in English dictionaries, encouragement is synonymous with boosting, cheering, confidence, fortitude, incitement, inspiration, support, trust, all very healthy things. But when I discovered this in the Greek, I became very partial to what the Greek says. And this is the word that's used in Hebrews 10.25. Parakaleo. Parakaleo. Two words. Para. Para means beside or by the side of. That's what para means. Kaleo means to exhort, to encourage, to appeal, to comfort, to implore to urge. Paraclerio. That's encouragement. You might say that encouraging is like a guide by the side who, who appeals and encourages, comforts, exhorts, implores, and urges someone. Since we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we are filled with God's ability to encourage. The same God that was filling up Jesus, encouraging Everywhere, that same Spirit is within us. His Spirit-filled guides by the side, His Spirit-filled encouragers, that's who we are. What keeps us from being part of a small group? Fear of rejection, low self-esteem, compassion. I'm sorry, comparison, not compassion. Comparison, <laughs> shame, bitterness, Lack of transparency, self-centeredness. These things can keep us from wanting to take a step toward a small group. The collective love of a small soldier and gathering will give you the courage to overcome. Don't you see 
how the enemy is doing what he's doing to separate you from the wholeness and the fullness of your God in you. 27 years ago, uh, in the beginning of this church, my wife, my family, and I opened up our home to become one of the first sojourn groups. This has been and still is true for us, and it will be true for you. The collective love of a small sojourn gathering will give you the courage to overcome. This is true for you.